Seven Reasons to Play Paladin has come after I have gone my jaw broken in P3S as both main tank and off tank multiple times, which I am really proud of, and oh yes, 100% Paladin is badass. Elevator pitch is that the Paladin is not only the magic tank of the game where yes, you are going to be spending a ton of time casting spells which can be done at range every minute. On top of that though, Paladin is also the number one utility tank in the game providing some fascinatingly potent utility. Subjective, but I adore the Paladin's rotation and it always it always feels interesting to me stepping between melee and magic and blurring that line with a lot of wiggle room and potential for optimization if you're interested in that. Oh yeah, and I guess even more subjective is it flat out looks cool. Paladin is my favorite tank in this game right now and I do totally recommend it. It is actually such an easy recommendation for me to make. If this video inspires you to try the way of the magic tank, I would super appreciate if you cast clemency on that like button and cat daddy that subscribe button. Or I guess that you could cast blade of truth, blade of faith, and blade of valor after confetti or on that like button. Yeah. I'm so stupid. Reason number one is the Paladin honestly has a pretty fantastic rotation in Endwalker. Oftentimes I hear how boring tanks are and honestly, Paladin in the days of Eld that you only hear whispers of anymore did in fact use an ability called Flash for AoE and it did no damage and when we got Total Eclipse it was actually revolutionary. <laughs> the combo and single target was, uh, I'll, I'll describe it as horrific in A Realm Reborn. <laughs> But Endwalker Paladin, it, it has somehow completely redeemed itself from that time, which saying redeemed from that absolute horror of the past is saying a lot. That That is a monumental hill to climb, if you get what I mean. Currently, they're weaving between their physical fight or flight buffed combo, keeping up their damage over time effect, and then gaining charges of atonement, which then they use for over and over again fantastic small bursts of damage and then they reapply the damage over time effect but during that time you're going to be throwing in a ton of off gcds with expatiation i'm probably saying that wrong but my <laughs> i'm trying uh, double dashes with intervene you're throwing circle of scorn out there and somewhere in there you're popping in requiescat ahead of what comes next that is a lot of off gcds to juggle on top of tanking responsibilities like you can see that i'm very intentionally like trying to position the phoenix phonix in terms of like getting the like back position for the melee and you can kind of see in my p3s footage that i'm like kind of tilting a little bit to the side just so that the melees have an easier time like juggling between the side i mean the flank and then the back side of the loss there's just a significant amount going on but after you reapply that damage over time effect in the like physical stance what comes next is that you then pop into your magic combo for eight global cooldowns which to put it shortly is <laughs> at this point is absolutely like king badass shit level awesome like it, it looks great it feels great but my point here is that paladin has a very dynamic rotation especially for the tank and there's a lot of like life cycles where you're going for the, the like physical into the magical and there's a lot of optimization and stuff at play here that you can do you can't do you'll still do well either way and it's just like you could save charges of holy spirit cast for particular movement phases and paladin's rotation obviously won't reset at that point same deal with atonement charges for like those melee uh, like major flexibility plus 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 here I am very much a fan of Paladin's gameplay to say the least. Reason number two is that the Paladin is the only tank in the game to feature a magical ranged combo and truly live that magic tank fantasy. Through your rotation you're going to be popping Requiescat every minute and yes every minute that will allow you to fly around the field popping four casts of Holy Spirit for fantastic damage at range and then you're going to be popping into another four casts of what I'm lovingly calling the Paladin's confetti combo. That's what I was kind of trying to get at when I was talking about liking the like one, it's like Blade of Truth and Blade of Valor, you get what I mean now. But this sum totals as 8 GCD around it, 2.5 seconds per GCD is roughly 20 seconds of mobility per minute because the Paladin's optimal GCD is something like 2.43, 2.44 around there, but roughly 20 seconds every minute. And really, there's no denying that this feels fucking awesome. Like, obviously in an ideal world, you would stay near the boss because auto, dam auto attack damage is not insignificant. That's important. But whenever you do need to fly around the field for mechanics, repositioning a boss at the right moment, it feels absolutely, like, bizarrely incredible. It feels so good. Reason number three is that Paladin has a metric ton of utility in it, and some of it is 100% more fringe than others, like Clemency. That's not going to be an ideal ability to cast, and it is a massive of DPS loss, but I have found that just taking Paladin through the extreme trials on real and savage fights lately that I even now though that I've been using it to catch people right before they would have died as always 
Party Finder and Prague is a weird spot to be in. It's obviously sub-ideal, but you know what is even more of a DPS loss? Death, or rather death of a DPS that you could potentially save. But with that out of the way, the Paladin really is still the premier utility tank of Final Fantasy XIV. Paladin features a very easy to proc themselves now since your Holy Spirit healing or your Confetti combo healing does proc it, but they have an ability called Divine Veil is what I'm trying to get at here. And Divine Veil not only provides a strong shield to allies to buffer incoming damage, but now apparently the developers tacked Medica onto it now. So it also provides a little bit of healing to top people off, and as a healer main, my perspective of that is actually pretty positive towards chip damage and keeping people topped off. Especially for successive incoming damage, that's always going to be a welcome thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this as a healer and I'm like, wow, why? how offensive. An extra 400 potency of healing from my tanks, how dare they? <laughs> Said no one with a brain ever. But on top of that, Paladin also should be using Passage of Arms ability, which has an absolutely spectacular animation. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like top tier animation like whoever did this it should be given a bonus like it's fucking gorgeous but this reduces incoming damage by 15 percent and most tanks either have one mitigation or warrior has barrier oh you mean specifically magic damage by 10 percent mm, depending on the situation i'd say never mind paladin wins here which if you do need to hold it then you do have that option. What I should get at here is the trade-off for Paladin is that successive AoE you would need to hold down this ability which unfortunately stops you from like need doing damage but for single blast or strong AoE you just weave it in between GCD abilities and there is absolutely no loss. So again it really depends on the situation. There's also on that note going to be the fringe utility of cover which redirects all the damage a particular party member takes to yourself and while it's not always useful honestly it absolutely certainly in weird situations party finder enjoys finding itself in we're actually in static prog even definitely finding some applicability there so cover is still very useful in situations again a lot of these abilities are abilities that you don't want to have to use but when you have them you'll be thank fuck i have them <laughs> remembering distinctly one of my ex-friends used to like run like rathlos and like mentor roulette and like these sprouts would to like run away with the stack marker and then he would be able to swoop in with cover and like actually save them so it's just like you don't always want it but when you have it oh my god it's so useful reason number four now is a kind of meta point about points one two and three and paladin really does feel like that supportive magic tank it fits that super specific fantasy of a warrior that defends allies both with swords as well as helpful magic really really well it's incredibly flavorful and endwalker paladin frankly delivers that fantasy in full i really can't get that experience anywhere else and i genuinely find paladin nothing short of extremely refreshing i should actually end this by saying that it's not just a fantasy though it is the actual gameplay in your actual skills and tool sets that you're actually using which is absolutely great it's just like you can tell me all the lore you want but paladin actually pushes it and you actually do supportive magic things i i love it reason number five is really short and it's that the paladin has the single best invulnerability in the game for 10 seconds the paladin literally <laughs> takes no damage and laughs at anything and everything imagine needing your hp to hit one now the one drawback i do need to say is the cooldown is 420 seconds 420 seconds cooldown. Hmm. I'm not even mad. That's actually kind of funny. Reason number six is that Paladin frankly dumps out a hilarious amount of healing. People always identify Warrior can heal a lot, and that's absolutely 100% true, but so few people talk about the fact that the Paladin essentially lifts their leg and lets one rip and heals everyone and everything, makes the rivers flow, makes the crops bountiful, and makes your crush somehow like you. It makes sense if you look at it logically because Paladin's Holy Sheltron is great. Divine Veil is fantastic. Their entire AGCDs of magic heals them not non-stop too, so heck in dungeons, even, even like Holy Circle is great. Just like throughout the entire Paladin's kit, weave throughout it without even really thinking about it, you're doing a ton of healing. And reason number seven is that the Paladin flat out has some of the best glamours in the game. Like the entire aesthetic of the Paladin is fantastic in 14. We have hilarious paddles like this, which are nothing short of uh, ridiculous. We also have burning blue flaming swords, which yes, to this day remains an absolute favorite of mine. Guide how to get it coming on my channel pretty soon we also have the orange variant of that sword we have this lightsaber kind of sword with the rose thorns and all that like the shields and the swords just look ridiculously great the aesthetics are absolutely on fleek with paladin so this brings us to the conclusion do i recommend paladin of course I do. It's currently my favorite tank in all of Final Fantasy XIV if I'm having a complete mask off moment. I absolutely adore its gameplay and its aesthetic and its utility and its lore. Paladin is an absolute fucking beast and it, it, it doesn't even... 
how to say it, it doesn't really have that many issues in my brain. It's just a very well-oiled machine that offers so much. I've really found a situation where I'm like, oh, I really don't want to go Paladin, but I'm like, this is great. So if you even have the faintest interest in it, I'd absolutely say hop on Paladin and give it a shot. And so that does it for this one. Take care, everyone, and I really do hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day. I love you all, and I appreciate you all so much. Take care, and have a great one.